All right, everyone. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Project Harbor Maintenance Track. Uh, I'm here today with uh, Wang Yang and myself, Vadim Bauer. We are two of the maintainers of Project Harbor, and we would like to tell you today what we have planned for our next release and what other things we're currently tinkering with. Uh, so let's get started, right? With a quick introduction, what are we currently working on, what is the outlook, and what uh, is going to be part of the next release in a couple of days or weeks. And let's get started. So if you're new to Harbor, um, Harbor is a CNCF graduated project that is basically a container registry with a few superpowers. So it's not just about storing your images, but really going the next level and managing your images with policies, role-based access control, et cetera, et cetera, right? So since uh, January, Harbor turned eight and we are still growing. And I can proudly say that Harbor is one of the most popular container registries out there. If you want to do something more than just store images and this is also some kind of reflected in the stars. Um, some of the key features of Harbor, you can do access control, you can do artifact distribution, you can do security and compliance, policies and maintainability. This is like all bit of a buzzwords here. So I think more interesting is it is the look from a user perspective. So what do you get as a user or in a different roles, right? So it's, the, the good thing about Harbor is it works for small teams equally as for large teams. So you can really start small with a few people and then you can add role-based access control, your IDP, and you can grow uh, with your, yeah, with your organization and in a more yeah, mature project, a mature setup over terabytes of, of size. Uh, for CISO, it's quite interesting because you can have a registry where you have all your images in one place. So you can replication, you use replication where you can replicate images from different locations all the way to a central place. You have vulnerability dashboards, you have vulnerability overview, you have audit trails. So all the things that make CISO happy are included into Harbor. So that's why it makes CISOs happy. And my favorite is the ops people's darling is because we can automate a lot of things. You can implement GitOps workflows. You can use Terraform to manage Harbor or Pulumi. And you have like quotas so that it doesn't make AWS and Azure happy. Uh, you have policies, you have garbage collection and all those things that makes your operation of Harbor quite convenient. And so after a really quick introduction into Harbor, let's take a quick look at Harbor today, what are the things we're currently working on? And there is, a, before we get started, I would like to mention about our Harbor operator. It was donated to the project some time ago, and there have been quite a few users uh, using this project. And it's basically, you know, a tool allows you to install and manage Harbor via uh, CRDs. And Situation with the project currently is that it's kind of a bit of outdated. So we, I think the last stable release was two for, two for something, two for, for, two for one, I'm, I'm not sure. And as you can see, because I'm not sure, it's not really maintained. And that means if you're using this project, I really would highlight or recommend you, you know, join us and start contributing to the project because it's at the stage where we don't have, if we don't have contribution to that, we might archive it, right? So if you're depending on it and using it, and if you want to keep using it, then it might be a good chance to contribute to that, right? Um, one good thing is we're working on a Harbor CLI. Uh, there are quite a few CLIs already in the community. There are all, not always, but few of them are outdated. And we think it makes sense to centralize it and, and, and make it a bit officially. So we're working on an official CLI, and I'm very happy to say that the CLI is currently developed by LFX Mentorship Program mentees. So it started last year and it continues this year. So all the development and effort is done by Linux Foundation Mentorship Program. So if you're a student or a young professional and you would like to contribute the next season, this is a perfect opportunity to, to join here. Um, so we 
expect, it's already public, but uh, you can expect something usable in uh, some, somewhere in, in June that you can integrate into your CI CD pipeline and work with that, right? So the goal is to not just use it on the CLI, but also integrate it into the pipelines. Um, another project that I'm working on or I'm focusing currently is Harbor Satellite. This allows you to bring the, your red registry at the edge, so where you can manage thousands of registries, uh, all distributed. And this is especially useful for IoT and edge use cases or locations where there is no permanent internet connectivity. Or, and this is something we're currently working on in collaboration with the LFX mentorship program, but also with people from our community. And there is a project, POC should be released also in June somewhere. And we expect general availability somewhere in 2024. So <laughs> there is no clear deadline, but uh, some, somewhere this year should be some, uh, something usable. And a big thanks to Philip Lane, who is a contributor to Spiegel. If you're using K3S, you probably might heard about that one. It's a super awesome project. And Philip uh, joined Satellite to uh, support us in this effort. So um, you can expect a bit something in this direction. Right, um, there is some crazy lab experiment I'm working on, and it's about what if we could store other type of artifacts in an OCI registry. In particular, what are the most prominent artifacts out there, like Maven, NPM, so what if we could store those also in OCI registry? How does it look like? What needs to be done in order to make it happen? Does it make sense, right? So this is like a crazy lab experiment to see if it's really feasible. And the answer is yes, it's feasible. Does it make sense? Mm, I don't know, but we can do it, right? So we can do it as an, in a proxy mode, so we can, where we can translate the requests into OCI and, and back. Uh, or we can do the extension mode where we can extend the, the CLIs of you know, Maven and PM and support OCI natively. And it's a bit of trade-off, like, should we do it, should we not do it? Does it make sense? Is it a game changer? So this is more the question to you community. Is it a game changer? And if you think it would be a game changer, you know, talk to us and then we can figure out if it makes sense to continue. Right. And now I would like to hand over to Wang Yang, and he's going to explain what we have up for next release in 2.11, and it's going to be about SBOM probably, right? So he's... Thank you. Um, hi, thank, uh, thanks, Marim. Um, um, uh, I'm Ian uh, from the uh, Harbor team, and currently I'm on the Harbor uh, core maintainer, and uh, I'm work, working with uh, our team to maintain the Harbor project, and. Uh, I'm sort of leading this, this project. Um, today I will be uh, presenting the latest uh, key features uh, since uh, Harbor 2.10. And uh, yep. So uh, this is the first one, and um, the rubber full access. We have uh, redesigned the, the Harbor uh, robot uh, creation uh, UI. So uh, initially, um, this rubber cost would mean to have access to nearly all Harbor APIs, but in the early versions, only limited access was granted by UI. Let's mean that if you wanted to create a robot with specific permissions using API, it could be get pretty tricky, especially if you're not familiar with the extensive uh, Harbor API ecosystem, which has uh, hundreds of uh, endpoints. To simplify matters, we have uh, spoofed up the Harbor UI. We have through uh, in a user interface tutorial that walk you through creating a robot step by step. Now, it, all it takes is a single click to specify the permission you need. Um, easy peasy. So um, let's try to uh, the first time in uh, I'm trying to create a project level robot, and uh, we break the flow into two steps. In the first step, you are required to um, input some basic information like name, description, and expiration time. 
And uh, in the second step, you are required to uh, um, select uh, the uh, permission um, site, like uh, the combination of resource and actions. And you can customize any uh, permission site for your uh, robots. And you can also select or or this collect or. And uh, after finish, you could see the created robot in the uh, degree. And uh, you can see the uh, selected permission in the pop-up dialog. And uh, you can also edit the uh, permission as you want. And uh, the next, I will try to create a system level robot. Now, the similar steps, but with one more step, like that is uh, you have to specify the system level uh, uh, resource um, combination. So here, I'm trying to specify some basic information for my system level robot. And uh, in the second step, you are asked to select the combination of system resource and action like uh, replication, garbage collection, scan, image scanning, yeah, and so on and so forth. And you can also select or or this or. And uh, this step, you have to ask to select the project coverage for your system for your system level robot. And uh, you can cover or project, or you can customize your project scope. And uh, as well as you need to customize the combination of permission for this specific and uh, project. So after the creation is successfully, you could see the uh, um, customized scope in the data grid, like the system level like the project level uh, robot. And uh, so, okay. So what we are doing right now, and um, you may uh, be aware that the OCI community recently dropped its 101 re version, making a big milestone because they haven't been any re new releases for years. So then let me quickly recap the major changes in 101. And the first one is the artifact type. So with the updated version, you will be able to create any new type of OCI artifact by simplifying specifying this field when building a manifest. Previously, uh, some OCI clients had to resort to using the config media type, while others rely on annotation to work around this limitation. As there was no standardized approach, However, with the latest changes, you can easily achieve this through the artifact type. So the second one is the subject field. So what is the subject field? It is an association from one manifest to another. But it might uh, sound uh, a bit uh, um, abstract, but let me give you uh, some concrete example to clarify. Imagine that you want to ensure the safety of your artifact. You may want to send it and use the registry to store the signature. In the version 100 of specification, you could only push the signature as a separate OCI artifact. But in version 101, you could now use the subject field to say, hey, this signature belongs to my image then this way, the registry will understand the relationship and help you to establish it. And the same story for S1, which I'm going to talk about later. And uh, the last one is the reference API. And the, it will help the client to understand how many objects belong to one specific artifact and what are they. And uh, um, let's talk about what we have been up to on Harbor side to support latest specifications. Um, picture this. You are pushing an image using the Docker client. Then you use cosine to attach the S1 file to the uploaded image and then use notation to sign the image. 
So now, on the server side, Harbor steps in. It will definitely understand what latest artifacts are and how they related to each other. As shown in a, a chart, we are here to help to build and virtualize these relationships for you. And by the way, in the Harvard dictionary, we are using the word accessory to describe this kind of uh, objects, I mean uh, signature or as well. So um, uh, let me demo the uh, one-on-one -on -one support. So firstly, um, I'm trying to create a demo artifact. And then I uh, will try to use the uh, Auras client to upload my demo object. So after that, you will see the demo object in the Harbor UI. And uh, yeah, let me refresh that. And uh, then I will try to use notation to sign this demo artifact. And uh, we are using the OCI one one mode. So you will see there will be a new accessory be attached to the demo v1 object and the uh, type is signature.nutation. And next, I'm trying to use the cosine to upload a uh, SBOM file to point to the uh, demo v1 as a subtract manifest. So we are using the 101 mode and point to the demo v1. So after that, you will see there are two accessories. The second one is the SMOM file. And so next, I will try to use the notation to sign this uploaded SMOM file. And uh, so after that, you will see uh, there should be three levels for your overall structure. And the last one should be the signature of the uh, SBOM file. And then the type is the uh, signature dot notation. And last, I will try to use um, ours to upload a institution file to my demo v1. And the, the same scenario, we will see there are three accessory uh, attached to this demo we want. Now we are using the one-on-one uh, -on -one mode and point to the demo we want and we are specifying some artifact type. So yeah, there are three uh, accessories. And the, the last step is where I'm trying to use mutation to sign the last accessory that pushed by the uh, um, last, last time, last step. So this is the whole structure of your artifact. And then we do have a uh, subject manifest, a signature, a ice bomb, a institution, and the, the signatures of these two accessories. And then let's try to use the Auras discover command to see the structure of your uh, artifacts the same structure as Harbor shows, right? So um, here I wanna emphasize that both Harbor and the OCI clients, I mean, uh, ours, mutation, cosine, we do not do customize anything for each other. We are simplify coding based on the same specification. I mentioned the distribution spike 101. And uh, so let me try to um, replicate the uploaded um, demo artifact to another Harbor registry. And uh, here is the a demo uh, website. And uh, after the replication is executed successfully, let's try to check the uh, replicated artifact in the target harbor. So in the target harbor, it should keep the same structure 
as a source. Source. That is, they should have three levels. The third, the first level is the subject, and then the last level should be the signatures. Okay. Um. So, let's check about the plot of scanners back. You may uh, already be familiar with how Harbor currently supports Trivi as a built-in scanner to snip off CVE. But did you know that Harbor has the potential to support a whole array of third-party scanners? It's true. All you need to do as a scanner developer is web up an adapter based on the plug of scanner spike. This spike essentially lists down the rules for how a scanner should interact with Harbor to carry out the artifact scanning. In our latest release, 1.2, we are all about enhancing this back. We want to make it even more adaptable, flexible, so that it can allow more of scanners' capabilities. Right now, we are focusing on the CVE scanning, but we are eyeing up a spam for the next move. Beyond that, we are thinking about tackling CIS and misconfiguration. So, metadata, which is basically the description of a uh, scanner, including what it can do. But in the previous version, the description was pretty basic. Now, in the 2.1.2, we have stepped it up a notch. We have uh, enhanced the response to provide more detailed information. So when a scanner communicates, it can now specify its exact, exact capabilities. For instance, it can tell Harbor that it can support SBOM generation, secret scanning, CV scanning, and other similar functions. So with the upgraded response, when Harbor sends out a scanning request, it can now specify the process capabilities needed for a scanner to get the job done. For instance, Harbor may send out a scanning request that requires both a CVE as bomb scanning capabilities. So, and, uh, and by the way, we are collaborating with the Trevi team to make this happen. Um, let's delve into the um, as bomb support. Ensuring the safety of your artifacts is our um, utmost uh, um, priority. And the small support is a crucial area, right? So we are aiming to utilize the changes in the uh, distribution spike, plot both scanner spike, to bring s -bomb support to Harbor. For, uh, for, for example, with the updates in the plug of scanner spec, Harbor could prompt Trivi to create an s -bomb for any necessary artifacts. Additionally, leveraging the adjustments in the distribution spec, Harbor will generate an individual OCI artifact for the produced s -bomb. This artifact will be attached as an uh, accessory that I mentioned earlier. We call it uh, accessory in the Harbor Dictionary to the main image. So consequently, Harbor will be able to virtualize the relation and distribute them as a cohesive unit. And uh, let me try to uh, start the demo of uh, as well. So first, I, um, I'm trying to create a project. And then uh, I'm trying to push a uh, engine image to my project. So after I, you could see the image in the Paris project. And then you will see there are two more buttons here. And S-bomb generation and stop generation. So here, let's try to generate S-bomb for engines. And the status changed to cute. And let's wait for several seconds. And uh, you could see there will be uh, one more OCI object 
be attached to the subject engines, and the type is Harbor Door Asma. And there is there is a link for you to see the Asma details after click. It will jump to the uh, degree. You can see the all the package information like uh, name, version, and license. And we do have the pagination, so you you can view all the package information then in this website. And besides that, you can download the whole JSON file for you to distribute them to others. You can see the format is. As PDX, and uh, it's generated by Trivi and all the other um, package information here. So, and uh, beside that, we do have one more option for you to auto generate as bomb on push. That means when you push a new image into Harbor, Harbor will auto generate uh, as bomb and be attached to as a kind of accessory. To your subject manifest, and uh, after that, let me try to replicate my image with my which the S1 file to another harbor. So after the uh, replication is completed and successfully, um, you could see in the target project in the target harbor. You could see uh, um, there are two objects. One is engines, another one is the SMOM file, and uh, you do not need to regenerate the SMOM again. In the target harbor, you could see the details directly after the replication successfully. Yeah. Um, this is the uh, uh, demo for uh, SMOM, and uh, about the future. So, what do we plan to do? Um, we have committed to diving deeper into artifact security, and essentially in the realm of SMAM. Since we are, since we already support SMAM, our next step is to optimize its uses to accelerate the CVE's scanning performance. That means leveraging SMAM to Streamline the scanning process, as scanner won't need to pull the entire um, artifact, but the SMOM job, SMOM files. And additionally, we are exploring uh, integrating SMOM with the Harbor Security Hub to provide a comprehensive global security overview. And uh, and um, um, by the way, we wanted to define some policy around the package informa information, a uh, similar way the uh, uh, um, CV scanning. Like uh, if your image has some uh, critical package, then you can define a rule that that to block that image be put. And looking ahead, we are considering expanding support for. Multiple scanners. So currently, it is singleton system, but by supporting multiple scanner, each one can efficiently complete its tasks. So then, Harbor can consolidate all the results for the artifact, ensuring comprehensive coverage and analysis. So furthermore, we are enhancing the audit log with more detailed information. This will provide. Administrators with great uh, visibility and insight into harbor activities. And uh, yeah, this is all part um, of what we are doing and what we will do. So, um, again, we are seeking uh, um, collaboration. So, if you guys have any interest on harbor, no matter it is. Uh, PR issues box or, or documentation, or if you guys are using um, Harbor operator like Valimsat or Harbor Hell, yeah, join me live through this ways. Thank you.
have some some we have some time for yeah. questions. So yeah. there are some microphones. If you can, yeah, or you can. Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah we do have a, a replicator role, so you can define the roles match any repository or tag. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, yeah, I have a question uh, regarding deployment security because we've recently started using uh, a harbor, particularly for the security reason. Um, as a pull-through cache, for instance, uh, for Docker Hub or Quay or something like that. Um, and when you use deployment security, you kind of want to prevent that you pull images that have critical vulnerabilities, for instance. Um, but when you use this with um, a pull-through cache, uh, when the image is not yet present in Harbor, uh -huh. the um, scan happens uh, synchronously. The first scan happens synchronously, so even if your image has critical vulnerabilities, yeah. it will end up being deployed, and then any subsequent pull will uh, fail, of course, yeah. but it's already deployed. Yes. Um, there is an issue open for this, and yes. I also asked about it. Um, yes. Is there any outlook of that this becomes configurable? Um, yes, so, so, uh, the scanning performance is a problem, so that's why I mentioned earlier that uh, we want to leverage the SBOM to accelerate the uh, image scanning because that the scanner should not pull the entire object, just pull the SBOM file yeah, in KB. So it will sig significant in yeah, increase the, the, the performance. Yeah. Okay, but um, will, will you make it configurable that this first pool will fail in this case, so that it uh, needs to wait for the yeah, scan to complete? Yeah, you have to wait. Yeah, yes. So far, so currently you have to wait because from the perspective, security perspective, we do not know whether your image has critical CV or not. So if we do not know it, so we block it, right? So you basically yeah. want to have non image that not not have been scanned not be allowed to, to, to get pulled yeah at least the it should wait to serve the image to the puller uh un, until it is scanned and that yes. it's basically safe yes. but currently it's it just serves it anyway yeah, yeah and then it blocks it yeah and then after that it cannot be pulled anymore but it's deployed already yeah, yeah. and this yes. only happens on an image that's not yet present yeah okay yeah we, we need to yeah take, so it a, sounds a like request. before i know it you cannot pull it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We need to take it as a yeah. as a feature request then. Yeah. Um, firstly, awesome work for uh, implementing the referrers API. That's um, uh -huh. we've been waiting yeah. for that for a long time. Uh -huh. um, and on the the topic of is storing other artifacts in OCI repositories like the npm packages a game changer? From my opinion, yes, I think it is. Um, but no, I have a question around um, the SBOM storage implementation in, in Harbor. Um, so c can I store more than one SBOM per artifact? Yes, yes you can. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it looked like the SBOM format of choice that you went with was SPDX. Is that the default? And is it Yes. With currently, we do only support SPDX. But in the future plan, we do have an option for the system admin okay. to select whether it is a SPDF or Cyclone DX. And may I ask, what was the decision that drove you to use SPDX over Cyclone DX or any um, of the other? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, based on the discussion with the trivia team, yeah. OK, fair enough. Thank you. Anyone else? Ooh. Any more questions? No? no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you for joining.